Day one started off the usual way, except this time I'm not alone. I'll be joining ten other art creators on the Monarchy SMP to team up and face the bosses while also competing for crowns in special events and PvP. Whoever has the most at the end of the season will be crowned king or queen of the Monarchy. After meeting up with everyone at this nice little village, we all headed off our separate ways to spend the first night getting eaten by raptors and freezing to death. Fjorda's cold was harsh, but my second day went much better. I found myself some metal tools, befriended a bunch of Dilophosaur, only died once, and then killed this Ichthyornis for dinner on the beach that night. Day three, I decided I should probably put down a bed and made myself some storage before heading out to try and tame this Parasaur. I might have overestimated my boomerang's knockout power, but ooh, look, there's a unicorn. I was trying to figure out a better place to set up base on day four when I made friends with this nice raptor. Fed it this dodo, named him Ron, and then we hung out by the fire that night when the unicorn showed up again. Oh, hello there. It was a promising sight, but then my torch broke and it ran off into the night. Right into, uh, Spino, that is. I still hadn't run into any of the other players yet, but I did run into this Alpha Rex early on day five. You know, I think you can just have this beach. I was looking for a new place anyways. Abandoning my beach camp, the search for a more permanent home continued with Ron and my Dillo gang in tow. There were lots of raptors and unfriendly creatures to contend with on the way and my dinos were a bit tricky to keep up with at times, but by the end of the night I'd made myself a raptor saddle for Ron. Traveling a bit faster now, but that's enough deaths for one day, I think I'll just chill on this rock for the night. Day six, I headed out with Ron, climbed a mountain, and ended up finding this nice village. It looks perfect. Ooh, and it's got this nice little cave over here too. This might be just what I'm looking for. I decided to leave my other dinos for now and started setting up my new home. My decorating continued into the next day when I thought I heard something outside. When I went to check, I found wolves right at my door. While they stopped to howl, I headed up on this rock so I could shoot them without them eating me, but turns out it wasn't them I should be worried about. Behind me, I heard a roar, and as I jumped on my raptor, I saw a rex right on my tail. Oh, did you want those wolves? You can have them. After Ron stopped for a quick poop, we made it around this fence and left the rex and wolves to it. The wolves ended up winning the battle, but there were only two of them left now, and I think I might just tame them. Using the terrain to my advantage, I knocked them both out, fed them some meat, and made them my friends. Day 8, I tamed this nice tech parasaur to help me gather berries and named him Phil. He wouldn't fit inside, so I parked him outside instead. Not ready to lose any of my tames yet, I headed off into the snow alone to see if I could find some metal, but this pig wasn't having it and my stamina was too low to run. Took a few hits and then thought I'd escaped up on this rock, but I was wrong. Ended up spending the whole rest of my day trying to get my stuff back before finally giving up and resigning to my home to make some narcotics for the night. Bright and early the next morning, though, I took one of my new wolves, Nymeria, out to finally get my stuff back from Mr. Pig. Should have just done this yesterday, to be honest, but that's okay. After that, I headed a different way with my wolf to search for metal, which I'll be needing a lot of to set up any defenses for my crowns. Along with earning crowns from events throughout this season, we'll also have a special vault that generates crowns to defend. The sooner I can get mine down, the better. When I came back home from my metal run, I found I had some visitors, and it wasn't the friendly sort. The first Sabretooth was easy to deal with, but the other decided it wanted to kill Phil. I tried to jump on him in my panic, but it didn't work out for either of us. Guess I'll be needing something else to help me gather berries. Day 10 started off with an Argentavis walking right outside my village, so I decided to make a quick trap and tame it. Apparently there are quite a few Argy around here, because another showed up just after and I tamed it too, naming them Ray and Jay. I don't have saddles for them yet, but they'll help me deal with some of the other dinos that keep coming around here. I also gathered some materials to put up a gate on that cave. Maybe I can just stick my crown vault in here for now. That night, I made another trap intended for an Anki, but this scorpion wandered in first. Guess you can go too. Why not? The next morning, I got a low-level Anki in the trap and then headed out again with Ron to find a flyer. I've got to meet up with some of the others soon, and I'd rather not show up on a raptor. No offense, buddy. I had to go AFK for a moment and almost got eaten by this Rex. Oops. Guess I can't pause my game on a server. Decided to just go ahead and knock out the Rex, then spotted the first sign of anyone else, this canoe. Got back on track and knocked out this Pteranodon after, then while waiting for it to tame, I was distracted by this new Fjordor creature, the Andrew Sarkis. 
You give them some honey and then hop on for a wild ride to win its trust. But I must have done something wrong because this one sure wasn't trusting me. After kicking me, it yeeted me straight off this ledge to my death. Thankfully, I'd put down a sleeping bag, though, and decided to give it another go. Looks like third time's the charm, and I ended up naming it da 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 That night, I headed back with my new Terra, the Andrew Sarkis, and the Rex, but turns out there was already a Rex at my base. It managed to eat my Stego and an RG before I was able to lead it off the cliff. Well, welcome home, guys. Day 12, I took my new pteranodon out to find a better pteranodon. It took me all day, but by nightfall, I was headed back home. Stopped for some crystal on the way, and then was finally able to make myself some soul traps that night. Now I'll be able to keep my dinos safe inside of these instead of sitting out like a dino buffet. Day 13, I was invited to join in with some others for a naked cave run in this horrible lava cave that I know all too well. 3, 2, 1, go! Let's do it! The goal was to get the artifact at the end and get back out again, but that was easier said than done. I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh, no, 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 I'm so close. So my brother's a stake! Ah! I did not get an artifact, but I did head out again the next day for another group excursion. Apparently they like lava and death as well, because today we're looking for fire wyvern eggs. Oh, it's bad. Come on. Oh, it's bad. I see fire going off! This is so bad. Oh my god, I ran out of stamina. Come on, come on, come on. I had some really close calls, but somehow managed to juke my way out of them and make my way back home that night with an egg. Then spent the night taming my third berry getter. Hopefully this one will last a bit longer. Day 15, I was tired of dangerous things wandering into my base, so I spent all day building this wall around it. The next day wasn't much more interesting. I gathered some cementing paste from Beaver Dam, tamed this blue roly-poly to help me with gathering stone, and then trapped and tamed this snow owl that wandered too close to my base. Day 17, I met up with Krabby Tron, and we headed off to the Redwoods. Definitely not the safest place, but there are supposed to be Maywings here, and I want one. She was still beach bobbing, so I picked her up with my pteranodon. You can tell I'm not used to traveling with friends, as I see spun her right out of my grip over the edge of this cliff. No! No! Wait! wait. <laughs> no! <laughs> she hurt me! Oops, I'm still struggling with this switch to mouse and keyboard. Picked her up again, and things didn't get much better from there. Found a level 130 Maywing, trapped it, and knocked it out, but then as we were looking around for another, a Carno snuck up and ate it. So much for that. My next day was spent trying to steal wyvern eggs from this crazy cave over in Vanaheim. We were trying to see who could be the first to steal one successfully, but clearly I should be putting more levels into speed. The cave was suspiciously quiet and empty of wyverns until Dave managed to steal the first egg. We all scattered, but it was a lost cause, and this was the first of many deaths to poison wyverns. After many failed attempts, I went home to get my grappling hook, then came back and finally managed to get myself an egg. Now the plan was to try and knock out one of these wyverns for its milk to raise the eggs. Raz Clark made a trap as ASG headed in on his Maywing named Snack to try and lead out a wyvern. But it didn't work out, and I guess now I know why it was named Snack. No! It's not! The trap isn't ready! Oh, no, 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 no. Why is it coming over here? No, no, no. Oh, oh. Eventually, we did get one knocked out, and then I guess the boys got bored, deciding to knock out each other instead. My Safety time! Oh, no. <laughs> Enough of that, I still want a Maywing, gosh darn it. So I headed off to the Redwoods with Raz Clark. Right, nice gentle straw for the Redwoods. Me and Cyclo. Yeah. The Redwoods are known to be a dangerous place, but I wasn't expecting to get speared by this deer. Apparently the Kraken's Better Dinos mod makes them a lot more dangerous. Oh, you died? You talked to a deer. After I made my way back, we managed to find a couple high levels to tame. I think I might call mine Bandit. That'll be the perfect name. I took my new ride out to the ocean to gather some oil, and then headed to this island to get some organic polymer before heading back home that night. The next day, I tamed a couple of high-level Argentavis and named them Maverick and Mar. They made fast friends, and I'm high enough level to ride them now, so I can use them to carry my Anki to gather metal much faster. They'll also be great to help me deal with all these alphas spawning around my base. That night, I tamed this Ovis, and then instead of the usual Sabertooth stopping by, I had a different sort of visitor. It was ASG on his Maywing Snack 3. He would brought me a few gifts, including this teleporter, and then showed off his unicorn for a bit before heading back home for the day. I spent the rest of mine building things up at base, I'd finally reached auto turrets, and was pretty excited to get down some protection for my crown vault. Instead of raiding for the usual loot, on this server you can only raid for crowns. And instead of demolishing everything they own, you might give them a nice haircut. After finishing up my defenses, I headed out before the sun the next morning to meet up with Bitmore Dave. 
pretty sure he said something about taming some of these new bats in a cave. In order to tame these bats, you have to let them suck your blood. Or just eat blood packs out of your inventory. The plan was to net these two, kill one and then tame the other, and use it to get more blood packs to tame another. But while I was trying to kill this one, the other one grabbed Dave and glitched him right into the floor. I had all the blood packs, so I tossed them to him before turning back to kill the other bat. Just in time for the bat to drop him and grab me instead. And now I need the blood pack. He tossed them back, but I couldn't reach them, and then the bat carried me away. When it dropped me, I ran to watch from afar as he finished up the tame. Now we just need some more blood packs for the next one. After going a bit overboard with the blood extraction syringe, I ended up getting my stuff stole by a fjord hop. Wasn't expecting that, but after I got my stuff back, I headed inside to tame a bat of my own. I ended up getting dropped a few more times than I had parachutes. Then we both lost our stuff to the fjord hawks this time. But finally, the bat was mine. Yes! You got a 140? Yes. Nice! After all that excitement, we finished off the day with a bit of mega rabies. Whoa! What is happening? Whoa, I've got mega rabies. I've got mega rabies! before heading our separate ways. The next day, it was time for our first group event for crowns. But when I logged on, I came to find that someone had stolen all of mine. My turrets had been drained and my scorpion was killed by tribe legendary, which it turns out is none other than Vino a fellow 100 Days creator, and the host of today's event. Which it's time for, actually, so I guess my revenge will have to wait. Because today, we're having an Andrew Sarkis race. My fellow monarchs, and welcome to the first event to win a crown. Today we do some it started off with a quick rodeo for everyone to tame their own Andrew Sarkis, but I think maybe a few people hadn't tried taming one yet. Turns out I'd left my spyglass at home, so I ended up taming the first one I saw, and ended up with this nice level 29 I named Ah. Uh... After that, the races were on as we split into different heats to compete. The Andrew Sarkis's slide and boost maneuver made for some interesting moments, including this one where Dave and Apex fell off the edge. <laughs> Then it was my turn next, but I wouldn't place any bets. I slid into first place pretty early on, but in the end, my Andrew Sarkis ran out of gas and I ended up coming in last. Then it was time for the final race, and Raz Clark ended up walking away with the crowns in first place. <laughs> There was a bit of an issue in the winner's circle, and then when I headed back home, I had a visitor. Oops. Hello. Hello. Captain Fat Dog had slid into my base just a little too hot and hit my Maywing by mistake. But after we got things settled down, it turns out he had heard about Vino stealing my crowns and wanted to offer a hand in getting them back. I wondered if you, if you wanted any assistance getting some crowns back from him. I've never really done any raiding before, so I was happy to accept the help. We agreed to meet back up later in the week, and I spent the rest of my night making this cheap be unicorn. The next morning started with me re-upping my crown defenses, and this time I put in a couple of RGs, cause why not? Now I need to go get another Stego to help me soak bullets when we go to raid Vino. This one tried to get into a fight with a scorpion first, but after healing it with my snow owl, I took her home to meet my other tech Stego. Day 26, I put down some air conditioners and made a bunch of Stego babies. Aww. Made some explosives the next morning, and it was time to meet up with Captain Fat Dog over at Vino's. He wasn't home, so we just let ourselves in. Then used a bit of K-Cam to peek around the corner before heading in with my Stego. But apparently all this excitement was too much for my computer to handle and all it recorded was this nice picture slideshow. You didn't miss much though, I mostly just ran past his turrets on my Stego. Now if only I'd remembered to bring my scissors. I was pretty proud of myself after that and spent the next day doing some things around the base and hatching more eggs. Then gathered a bit of metal and cementing paste before spending the night working on my crown cave. Before the sun rose the next morning, I met up with some others over on the lava island, which has a cave full of magmasaur eggs we're going to steal. I'd brought my new bat, which I named Lucille. These guys can go invisible at night, but by the time we all got here, it was almost morning and too late to use it. Too impatient to wait, we just flew in over the lava lizard's heads, teamed up to kill this fire wyvern that followed us in, then used our bats to distract the lava monsters while we each stole an egg. Get it, Solo, get it! Oh, no! I'm out. I'm on fire. I managed to make it out with a level 140 egg, but this fire wyvern wasn't very happy about it. It tried to eat and then roast my bat, but luckily got distracted by some other creature on the beach and I was able to teleport back to my home. Stuck the magmasaur in my S plus hatchery, spent the rest of my evening taming these Dimorphodon for some extra annoying cave defenses. Day 30 started out with this saber tooth trying to have me for breakfast. You know, I think I might need to get some more walls up around this place.
After that, my Magmasaur egg was all ready to hatch, and I ended up naming it Smokey. While it grew up, I spent the next day out taming this blue griffin and yellow rex. Lost the recording, but you know how it goes. I knocked them out, and now we're friends. Day 32, I logged in to find myself in a bit of a predicament. Someone had locked me in this cage, and for once, I was thankful for Fjorder's freezing cold. I respawned back at my bed to find my door was blown off, but my crown vault was safe and sound. Turns out, one of the other monarchs, Apex, was trying trying to cage everybody and just messing around. Hello, Solo. <laughs> I'm caging everyone. Later, he stopped by to say hi before taking back off again up into the sky. After all that, I met up with ASG for a trade that night. It was my turn to host this weekend's event, and he'd offered me a ton of metal structures if I'd introduce my male Magmasaur to his female. The next morning, I followed him over to his moon base. He gave me a ton of structures, plus some extra gear he had. Then it was time to start setting up for my event. I was a huge Pokemon fan as a kid, so my plan is to build a Pokemon stadium for us to battle dinos in. So I cleared myself out an area and spent the next next two whole days building it. I finished it up with a nice coat of paint, but still had a day to kill before the event. So when Terrifier invited me to go along with a few others to face the wolves, Hattie and Skull, I couldn't say no. He used a bunch of Stegos for tanks while we all flew around on our bats and shot them with shotguns. I got some decent loot out of it, including this Magmasaur saddle and a bit of element. Day 36 was event day, and I think everyone was a little excited. It took most of the day just to get everyone gathered up, but then it was time to explain the rules. 45 minutes to tame six different creatures with the materials provided in your box. And three, two, one, go. We all headed off our separate ways for the night and then came back the next morning with dinos to fight. After a quick round of Vino Pinata, the battles began. Some battles went just as you might expect, but others were a bit surprising. I ended up having to face off against Kaya, who had a tech Anki who was absolutely wrecking everything, including my stadium. It killed all my creatures and everyone else's too, and she ended up coming away with the win. So pretty. Day 38, I tamed this deer and named it Rudolph, then met up with Vino and Krabbytron to do a bit of caving. We need the artifact inside to face the bosses, but we figured we might have a little fun with it and try it on deer. This first cave was easy with only a few spiders and perlovia inside, but the second cave was a different different story and it did not go well for me and Rudolph. It started off bad when I got pushed off the edge by these wolves, but then it only got worse. After getting back up, I got pushed off again, but this time there was a polar bear down here. I tried to escape with this leap of faith, but in the end, well, it was the end. I respond outside at my sleeping bag, but Rudolph did not. I got back my stuff and followed them through the rest of the cave, mostly on foot. Except for the parts where I was dangling from my grappling hook. It might have been a little bit sketchy at times, but eventually the artifact of the Skylord was all mine. The next day, some of the others were planning to get together for a Stego boss run at the Broodmother. So I spent my day leveling up Stegos before heading over to Bitmore Dave's that night to pick up this shotgun. I had to provide the materials, but it was well worth it. Now, on day four, 41, it's time to face the first of many bosses for this 100 days. We went in with a team of tanky stegos plus one vino on a deer. Before we could chew through its almost 1 million health with our shotguns, I ended up losing three of my stegos. But eventually we were victorious, unlocking several tech grams and walking away with a bit of element each. After that, I'd learned that pretty much everyone but me already had some gotchas, so I spent the next day over in Vanaheim taming some of my own. While I was there, I ran into ASG on his Maywing, who was apparently doing the same thing. He gave me these plant species Y traps to feed them, which turns out is quite effective. After I tamed a few, I followed him back to his base where he gave me one of his too. Somehow, I don't think he's going to miss her. Along with that, he gave me this snail too and some plant species Y seeds to start a garden of my own to feed them. Then they'll give me these fancy crystals with resources or a surprise inside. Logged on the next morning to find this beautiful statue that Kaya on fire had made me, then met up with her later that day for a trade at her wonderful Redwoods base. I gave her some baby stegos for a long neck rifle and she gave me this pumpkin colored pig. I named him Jack the Pumpkin King and then turned right around that night to meet Captain Fat Dog, Graz Clark, and Krabby Tron for another boss fight. This time we'll be facing the giant monkey boss with these pigs. Between their healing ability and our super shotguns, this fight was actually turning out to be an easy one. Provided you could escape the little poo-flinging monkeys and not freeze to death anyway. And now I've unlocked even more Tech Grams. 
Most importantly, the tech generator. But first, I'll have to get the materials for a tech replicator so I can make it. In the meantime, I introduced my griffin to Bitmore Dave's griffin. Normally, you can't breed them in Ark, but with the Kraken's Better Dinos mod, you sure can. Aren't they cute? I also tamed this beautiful blue and red snow owl, then hatched some more eggs that night. I logged in the next day to find I'd been raided again, but this time by Raz Clark. I was a bit sad, but I moved on pretty quickly and started filling my cave up with more defensive dinos. Tamed a couple Perlovia to start breeding them. They can hide underground, jumping out at just the right moment to dismount your opponent. If I can't stop them from taking my crowns, I at least want it to be annoying. Day 47 was an interesting one. We all traveled over to the Monarchy Community Center server for a fishing event. I had a few words with Raz Clark about his raid. Then we all lined up on the beach and split into teams of three to go fishing. The goal was to come back with the most fish meat in the allotted time, but with PvP allowed, this was a lot more interesting than it might sound. I was teamed up with Terrifier and Musket Squid. We did pretty well for ourselves, but things got a little crazy in the end, and Krabbytron's team ended up coming away with the win. The next day, I gathered some materials and got some things done around the base, then headed off to the Redwoods to tame a Thyla, but ended up coming back with three Maywing instead. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not really sure what happened, but at least they're cute. For day 49, Raz Clark invited us over for a surprise on Aberration. But it's been a while since I've been to this map, and it's just as bad as I remembered. Thankfully, though, Nettie the Noodle came to my rescue, and we eventually made it down to meet the others. Looks like we're here to do a bit of speed dating with this Reaper Queen. We all took a turn introducing ourselves, and then it was time to head back over to our Fjorder server. Tomorrow, we'll be facing the dragon. But first, I've got to get some experience for this Reaper Baby. Turns out, you can do that by killing creatures in your soul terminal. For our first go at the dragon, we figured we'd have a little bit of fun. Instead of facing it any of the usual ways, we're going to try it on deer. Since I'd lost my Rudolph in the snow caves, I borrowed this one named Boss from Raz Clark's herd. ASG had brought his Rexes to Tang, but I think Dave missed the memo and had stepped out to grab a drink. What? Dave! He was AFK, but got back just in time. With a combination of shotguns while it was in the air and goring it from underneath when it landed, eventually we were able to defeat it. That was only the Gamma Dragon, though, and now we need to defeat the Alpha version. I brought in Jack the Pumpkin King to heal everyone up. Then we all headed in with a combination of Kaya's Therizino Army, Krabbytron's Rhino, Dave's Yudi, Vino's Dianonicus, Raz Clark's Shadow Mane, and ASG's Rexes. As the dragon was defeated, something new was unleashed on the server, though. The Arcaditions creatures are here, and along with them comes a new boss. Not only will we be facing the giant wolf of Fjorder, now we'll be trying to take on the savage acro as well. Now it was time for us to have our Reaper baby. After a quick maternity photo shoot, there was a bit of pranking around. Raz Clark's game crashed, so Vino was trying to paint him. But while he was doing that, I decided to do a bit of painting myself on Vino. I think I'll do just a touch of pink here, and maybe some socks. Headed home to have my Reaper baby next, but lost the recording. Normally, Ark babies are pretty cute, but this one only a mother could love. Spent most of day 52 trying to tame the dirt-dwelling Concavenator. You're supposed to blow it out of the ground a few times with explosives to knock it out, but this one just wouldn't go back underground. Day 53, I threw out a bunch of Perlovia and Dimorphodon to raise for my cave defenses, then made myself some scuba gear. It's about time to get some tech around here, and for that I'll need black pearls, which are mostly found at the bottom of the ocean. At first I tried doing this on my Maywing, but the jellyfish were making me nervous and I was terrified I was going to run into a squid. So I tamed myself this whale instead. Taming it was another one of those recordings that froze up. To be honest, it's a wonder this video even got made. But would you look at that, now we're on day 54 and I need more metal. I was getting pretty close to having all the materials I needed for my tech replicator, but I still needed some some oil, so I headed over to steal some from Apex. Then I just needed to get some polymer from the swamp island and I'd be ready to build my tech replicator. I stuck it outside on this platform beside my forge, then started off by building myself a tech generator. Not only does it power things around it without any wires, it also allows you to power these handy helpers, the S Plus Farmer and Gardener, which automates a lot of the not so fun parts of Ark, like putting poop in compost bins. Collecting gotcha crystals, on the other hand, will be done by this handy S plus item aggregator. I was pretty proud of all my new automation at base, but I've still got to collect stone on my own. Or do I? Maybe I can just let the kid take over for a bit. How in the world do you build all of these at the same time? Oh no, I dropped Sonic. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, I just dropped him again. 
Oh, there's an enclosure list. Nice, finally got another lock. Get that lock. Oh, there's a map. It's a 130. After she had a bit of fun, I had to send her out of the room for this next bit. She would have been really mad at me for killing all of these baby tech stegos, but I needed materials and they had to go. Spent the rest of my evening gathering more metal for bullets. Filling up my turrets to protect my crowns was taking every bit of it I had. And well, speaking of that, I got raided again too. Apparently Vino had come back, but at least this time he got stuck in one of my bear traps. I Oh, no. Oh, yes. I've been sticking them in these bushes outside my cave where you can't see them, but they only managed to slow him down. Guess I know what I'll be doing for the rest of the day. Day 57 was spent pretty much the same, gathering more materials and rebuilding all the things in my cave. I've got a few more tricks up my sleeve this time, though, including this trade I made with ASG. I gave him one of my crowns in exchange for a bit of protection. Along with several turrets, he also gave me some spare black pearl gotcha babies he had. That will make getting some more tech of my own a lot easier. Thanks to all that, maybe now I can take a couple days off of worrying about this vault. And then maybe I can put some of these materials into something a little more fun, like a tech helmet. Day 59, I continued working on my base automation by adding this S plus harvester, which will collect rocks and trees and bushes around my base automatically. But to keep all this new stuff up and running, I'm going to need a lot more element. I'd already used all of the element I'd collected from the boss fight, so I headed on over to the lava island to harvest some element shards. You can collect them from these purple crystals, but you better watch your back because there's nothing friendly around here. After collecting all the shards I could find, I took this opportunity to test out my bat's invisibility. You can only use it at night or while latched to a ceiling or wall, but I think it's safe to say it works pretty well. These two Rexes never even knew I was there. Day 60, I met up with Nettie, who is setting up for his event tomorrow. He'd built this trilobite-shaped stage for an ARC-themed trivia game. But now it looks like he's busy trying to punch out some dodos to tame. Decided to stick around for the day to help him out. I know how to tame a dodo. Or so I thought. My Tranks just didn't want to register on this one, and I ended up killing it by mistake. Oops. Maybe I shouldn't be shooting them in the head. I shot a bunch more in the body instead, then took them all over to Nettie. Holy moly, how have you, how have you taped all these? Thank you. It was a pretty chill day, and I finished it off by opening gotcha crystals full of black pearls. Now it's day 61, and it's time for Nettie the Noodles trivia event. I lost almost all of the recording, but in the end, it came down to this one last question. Ah. Which map is Shrek's hut on? What? He admit to me. I know that one. I did not. I sent in my best guess, but clearly it wasn't correct. Oh no! <laughs> oh, the, no. All, the only <laughs> one? Oh no! Oh no! Everyone else oh, no. Is, uh, is safe. The next couple of days were mostly just a blur of making trips to gather element shards from the lava island and gathering metal near my base with my magma sword. Keeping all this new shiny stuff at my base powered was a lot of work. I spent most of the morning on day 64 working on more cave defenses. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I guess if I keep adding more things, eventually it'll work. Stopped by Krabbytron's base later that day. Her bats had some pretty amazing stats, but to be honest, I was most interested in some of these modded building pieces I didn't even know were on the server. Oh, oh Actually, I, th oh, I have sorry. fountains too. I have fountains. It's all so pretty, and I really should do some more decorating around the base, but I've got element shards to gather and oil to steal. After that, it was day 66, and it was time for another group event. Ark Survival Guide had planned some sort of wyvern battle event, and it uses this crazy sheep tossing contraption built by Captain Fat Dog. <laughs> I sped up this footage to edit it, but it was so funny I just couldn't bring myself to slow it back down. Three, two, one, one, release the sheep! ASG had provided some extra wyverns, and the goal was for everyone to get as many sheep in their basket before the end of the time limit. Oh, I missed, oh, I missed, I missed my basket! My... Uh, my sheep oh, <laughs> With pretty much anything allowed in this game, getting the sheep in the basket was just half of the challenge. How do you get your stuff back without getting dead? Sheepy, 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 sheepy. No. My sheep. Give it back. There's another one out there. Go for that one. Oh, no. I was doing pretty well, but after someone pointed out I was in the lead, Captain Fat Dog decided to put it into it. No, no, no. What? Oh, come on. Someone netted me. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Stop it. It's only worth 10 points. I saw the right. 10, 15. 
No. Oh, no. <laughs> no. What a net. Things didn't get any better after that when Vino netted me and killed my second wyvern. I decided to net his back and kill it too, but apparently I got the wrong one. Oops. Sorry about that, ASG. You know what? I think I'm done catching sheep. I'm out of the lead now anyway, and catching people sounds a lot more fun. I got a little too excited, though, and ASG got his revenge on this one. Oh, no! With time almost up, I decided to go for one last sheep, but ended up catching a Razclark instead. He'd grappled onto the belly of my wyvern, and I had no idea how to shake him off. Stop it! No! Get off of me! I panicked for a bit, then ended up landing, where he finished off my wyvern and then headed after me. I hadn't even bothered to put on my armor after my last death, and my arc fighting experience is minimal, so I was pretty happy just to get this shot before I died again. It was time to announce the winner now, and Captain Fat Dog ended up walking away with the crowns. Back at base on day 67, and I hatched some baby Maywings to cheer me up after that law. Then headed back over to the lava island for more element shards, of course. Too bad my mining drill broke on the first set of crystals. Guess we'll just have to head back home. Later that night, I headed over to meet up with ASG at his Gold Mountain station. It should finish loading in any second now. Ah, there it is. Oh, and there's ASG. And he's got a solo-colored tech griffin for me. Apparently, he's been breeding them to try and get special colors for all of us in the monarchy. It was so pretty, I let the kid name it. Techie boy it is. Day 68, I'd fixed my mining drill and was back to gathering element shards. But I'd stayed out too early this time, and when I left the cave, I couldn't go invisible. There were some bats on my tail, but I probably would have been fine if I hadn't been trying to get this fancy camera angle for you guys. They picked me off my bat, and I shot the first one. But when it let me go, the next one grabbed me just as fast. This one ended up glitching me under the ground, and I teleported back inside the cave. Tried to grapple my way out, but missed, and ended up having to teleport back to home. Getting back up to my base without a flyer was a bit tricky, but it can be done. I've got more bats I traded for at some point, but I still don't want to lose this one. So I headed back to the lava island for a rescue mission. Thankfully, I lucked out and was able to get him back, just in time for me to head home and spend the night in my own bear trap. Well, at least now it's time for day 69, and I spent it doing one of my favorite things, building. I need more places to put all this shiny new tech stuff, like this S-plus vivarium, which generates materials depending on which dinosaurs you put inside. And apparently, griffins give you element shards, so I spent the night raising all the baby griffins I had. Now it's day 70, and it's time for us to team up again to face a boss. This time, it's the giant wolf boss of Fjordr. Thinner sulfur. We headed in first to test it out on the gamma difficulty using Dianonicus. These feathery little fellows are not only really fast, but they have an attack that does bleed damage, even on bosses. The plan was to run in and get in a few attacks before running back out while the pigs we brought take most of the damage. But as usual, things didn't work exactly as intended. It's it's me. Me. <laughs> hey, why are you off your pace? Save me. I ran in to try and help, but ended up getting dismounted myself. I got back on just in time as this wolf minion came up to take a bite. Despite that little scare, the strategy worked pretty well, and in the end, we all survived this fight. You know, I've never really used the Dianonicus much, but I kind of like this guy. Now, for the Alpha Fenrir, we had a new plan. Andrew Sarkis. What better way to take on a new boss than with a new dino? These guys have saddles with mini guns on their back, and they prevent you from being dismounted. Before heading in, though, we took a moment to give our dinos a bit of style. Like My one is the, the Fenrir. I am wearing the Fenrir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what this shell looks like. <laughs> Mashed right, potatoes. We can't get me a better hat than that. <laughs> Krabby Tron wasn't too happy with her hat, but there was no time to change it. We were going in. And I don't think anyone's hair could compete with ASG's Fabio Rex army anyway. They got the Fabios. And not only did they have great hair, but they were definitely the MVPs of this battle. The Rexes absolutely wrecked the big bad wolf while we dealt with its smaller minions. The fight ended up being easier than expected and was over before we knew it. <laughs> Yeah. But as if facing the boss twice already isn't enough, some of the others had some extra alpha trophies to use, so they decided we should make it a bit more tough. This time, we'll be leaving the Rexes at home and trying it with pigs only. I'm not sure if an Andrew Sarkis is really a pig, but we're going with it. This time, we needed a couple extra Deodon as well, so I headed home to get a couple of Jack the Pumpkin King's kids. Meet Kool-Aid and Tang. Sorry, you never met their mom, Sally, but I tamed her at some point and lost the recording. I've really enjoyed playing on this server, but it's 
it's definitely a lot to keep up with compared to single player. But there are some moments that can only be had with friends. Like when I was chilling with Terrifier here and Kaya snuck up and threw a poop at us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Or this moment when someone hit the button and Cap almost got left behind. Oh no, Cap! Oh no, Cap! Is there any way to stop it? He ended up making it just in time, but this time we were in for a rough ride. I ended up taking the big boy's aggro pretty early on, and with the help of the others, barely escaped with just a sliver of health left. Captain Fat Dog wasn't as lucky though, and he was the first to go. Okay, I'm running. I'm down. Where is I'm running. After that, it was Vino. Then ASG bit the dust next. Well, I bet yep, uh, here we go. I'm trying to pile them all. I'm I'm the, the, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm dead. <laughs> it was a close one for sure, but somehow we managed to squeak out a win. Hey, As we teleported back, though, apparently Cap had been up to no good. There were narc traps set and waiting for us. <laughs> <laughs> After we all had a good nap, I accidentally set off some more. Oh, you donkey. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Did he just call me a donkey? Oops. Do you have a finger in your inventory? I don't know. I'm going to sleep again, mate. I'll tell you in 10 minutes. <laughs> the battle was done, and I took my little piggies home. Krabby Tron donated the Andrew Sarkis for that battle, and she says I can keep this one I named Porkchop. Looks like you're here to stay, buddy. I stuck up my new flag from the wolf fight and took a moment to admire it. Then I finally have enough element from the boss battle, so I spent the rest of my day making myself a tech suit. Day 73, I stayed around base and made myself this S-plus crystal cracker. It automatically cracks gotcha crystals and then sends the materials to these fancy storage boxes. Then, I hate to admit it, but that night when I was working on my cave, I tech ran myself right into another bear trap. No, I didn't mean to tech run. Oh, I hate it. The next morning, I took my anger out on this RG before going back to work on my cave some more. I've left a lot of the grindiness out of this video, but trust me, there's been a lot. Now I want one of these tech transmitter things, but I have no idea where to put it. Guess it's time for more building. I put down some more foundations to stick it on, then added some rails and pillars to make it pretty. I had enough materials to make two of these tech transmitters. Apparently with the S Plus version, if you get enough of them, you can track wild dinos and their levels. I think mine's a bit confused though. It says I've got five and I've only got two. I spent most of day 75 putting things in the grinder from the gotcha. Then dealt with a bit of inventory management. On day 76, it was Raz Clark's turn to host an event. Looks like we'll be having a tech hover sale race. And I'm absolutely awful on these things. But look, Captain Fat Dog doesn't even need one. The plan was to race through this cave full of lava until we realized that these count as flyers and you can't take them oh, in. Oh, 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 so oh, oh, oh my god. What? No, what? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, this no. Is... <laughs> okay, new plan. Now we'll be racing to all the obelisks, starting with Blue and then meeting back at the portal room for the finish line. I did okay at first, making it to Blue Ob with everyone else. Ran into just a little bit of trouble going to Red Ob. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, oh God, lag. <laughs> But my worst mistake was when I got lost in the forest going to Green Ob and accidentally went to this green drop instead. Yeah, we don't have to tell anyone about that. After all that, I ended up coming in last, but at least it gave everyone a good laugh. We'll wait for Solo as well. It was a bit of a struggle, but I made it eventually. If you're still here by this point, though, I'm sure it's not for my pro gameplay anyway. Day 77, I'd been raided again. But worse than that, someone cut my hair. It was not a good look. As my new hair grew in, it only got worse, so I decided to put on my tech helmet for now. Turns out the raider was Raz, but thankfully he put all the ammo left after blowing up my turrets in this vault. I had brief thoughts of revenge as I hatched all these Demorphodon and threw out all my Stegos, but last time any of the big boys raided each other, it took almost a whole day. And I don't mean an arc one. So it looks like I'll be heading out to tame one of these new arc additions creatures instead. I found this level 145 Bracky over in Asgard and decided to try and tame it with my Andrew Sarkis pork chop. The Bracky's taming method is a bit unique. Instead of knocking it out with tranks, you shoot it in the knees when it rears up, which I figured would be a perfect task for the Andrew Sarkis's minigun saddle. 
It was all going pretty well until it fear roared me right off this cliff. Well, wasn't expecting that. I dismounted just in time, but then later it did it again and I got stuck on this rocks where it tried to stomp me. No, 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 not today, big boy. After that, I almost got eaten by these aloes and then ended up switching to another bracky because I almost killed the first one. This one went a little bit better, but instead I made some new mistakes. Like letting it almost kill Porkchop with this super stomp and accidentally shooting this stego that got in the way. By the end of the day, though, I finally knocked one out and spent the night watching it sleep. Took her home on day 79 and then spent the rest of the day leveling up these stegos. I'm not sure who I could raid, but I'm sure I'll find some way to use them before the end of this hundred days. On day 80, I decided to try for another of the Arc Edition's creatures, the Acrocanthosaurus. You're supposed to lower its health a bit to feed it, but I think I'm doing something wrong. Doesn't matter though, I killed it by mistake trying to kill this Diplo. After a rough morning, I decided to grab a drink. But it's not for me. Apparently, you use it to tame these giant elephants. I used those new tech transmitters to find myself a good level and then headed off on this Maywing I named Darkwing to find them. This Microraptor found me before I found the elephants. But can't fool me twice, I'd like to introduce you to my new tech rifle. Finally found the elephants when this Pteranodon started pushing me around. Did you not see my tech rifle? I put down some sleeping bags just to be safe and then headed in to make some new friends. They wagged their trunks and seemed friendly enough, so I moved in closer and tried to give one some beer. I thought for just a second one was going to stomp me, but not this time. My second try went just as well, but the third go, I think I got a little too close. It stomped and stunned me for a bit, but then after that I just couldn't seem to get anything right. I'm not sure what I was doing different, but clearly it wasn't working. And now look, they've broken my tech suit and you can see this horrible hair again. Made a quick pit stop back at base to repair my tech suit and then headed out to give it another try. Things didn't get much better though, they stomped me and roared and then this time I accidentally drank the beer myself instead. Oops. A few stomps later, I saved Darkwing from getting eaten by an aloe. Then I have no idea what changed, but I finally got it tamed the next morning. You know what? I think I might just spend today out gathering metal. Day 82, I finally got out my Reaper King and spent the day out killing all the things. At this point, I'd pretty much given up on defending the crowns in my cave, but I was all in when I got invited for a giant raid on Bitmore Day. Raz Clark gathered us all for a nice PowerPoint presentation of the plan. Looks like I'll be taking the role of Gandalf. Now that I've seen some others, I was finally able to change my hair back the next morning, then spent most of the next day packing materials over to Raz's base for the raid. At the end of the day, he said he had a special surprise ready for Dave, so we teleported over to Asgard so he could show me. <laughs> oh my goodness. His evil laugh said it all. Normally, you can't even breed Titanosaur in regular but art. But thanks to the mods we have on this server, I was staring at an army of at least 30 of them. That will definitely be quite the surprise. After that, we teleported over to the fob he had set up to make some plans. Well, mostly for him to tell me the plan, because let's be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. So you can come diving off here, and you've got... You've got a direct access to, to that turret tower. My job was to try and deal with the turret tower on the right, or at least look like I was for a bit of a distraction. So I got to work the next day setting up something that resembled a fob. Day 85, and it was finally time to get this party started as Raz, Captain Fat Dog, Vino, and I all gathered in front of the base. We had a bit of a parlay and then headed off our separate ways. Go, boss. See you later. All right. Sorry, or at least we tried to. Captain Fat Dog accidentally teleported us all back to his base by mistake. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh no, it's not a good start. Uh, hello. It's not a good start. Um, <laughs> um, um. Eventually, we all made it to our posts and started the attack. I led Stegos down the cliff to tank bullets while Vino did the same from the front. Raz Clark kept Dave busy with a variety of distractions, and Captain Fat Dog slowly chewed away at tech shields undetected in the back. When he was tired of Raz's tricks, Dave decided to come after me next. I did my best to defend with my RG, but it only ended with its death. The battle continued into the next day with pretty much the same thing. Though things did get a bit more interesting from Raz Clark and Bitmore Dave's point of view later that night. Eventually, on day 87, enough shields had been cracked and it was time for the army of Titanosaurs to come in from the back. They smashed and stomped, wrecking pretty much everything in their path. I mostly watched this day. It was was certainly a sight to see. You'd think that would have been the end of it, but beyond the gates, there was a cave full of even more things. Come with me, Sola. Uh, you wanna go for a trip? <laughs> uh, sure. I don't have anything important. See ya. Vino tossed me inside the walls with his Carquinos, but it didn't last too long. I tried to head back in on a Stego when I learned a quick lesson about art physics and his Giga Camp fit. 
It's all right, I'll push up. Can oh, I? No. oh, it can! Oh, it can fit! I had to log off as the war continued, but not long after, everyone else did too, leaving Dave's crowns up for grabs. I'd learned that Raz Clark intended to return to finish the job, so early the next morning, I decided to try to get to them first. I took in my stego to soak, but these turrets are no joke. At one point, I learned I could just lay here and the turret would just shoot the ground. It shot for a solid 15 minutes before it finally ran out. I spent a full day doing this until early the next morning. Uh-oh, looks like I won't be able to beat Raz to those crowns after all. What you been up to, Solo? Uh, <laughs> nothing. I got, I got, I got, I got to record this. Give me a second. <laughs> Lights, lights, lights. That's okay. We ended up teaming up to try something a little bit different. We ran different dinos in to block the turrets and then ended up trying this trike with a platform saddle. After spending a whole nother day at it, I ended up running out of time IRL and had to go, leaving him to finish the job. I returned the next day to see the aftermath and clean up my mess. It was a crazy few days, but probably some of the most fun I've had yet. Day 92, I woke up again with a new hairdo. This time, a fancy green fro. I can only assume the culprit, but there was no way I could break into his heavily defended base for any tricks. So instead, I checked to see who had their teleporters open and headed over to Captain Fat Dogs to paint everything pink. Then, on day 93, I continued my painting spree over at Krabby Trons with some green. Next up was Vino's base, and he got a bit of both colors. Day 94, I decided to give Taming the Acro another go. Trapped it this time and even followed a guide, but I definitely wasn't doing something right. So much for that, I gave up and spent the night taming this day on a suit. I know what I'm doing with this one. Well, mostly at least. And he was a gator boy. Once that was done, I still wanted to try and tame more of the Ark Editions creatures, but I just don't think it's in the cards. I headed to the water looking for this crazy barracuda fish, but wished I hadn't once I found it. My recording turned to mush again, but these pictures pretty much cover it. My spirit was a bit low after all of those fails, so on day 96, I settled in at home, getting dinos ready for our final boss, the Savage Acro. I didn't have much to bring, but I threw out what I had and got them all leveled up to go. I wasn't the only one preparing, though. On day 97, bit more Dave invited invited us over to see what he had planned for the boss. Mecha crab. <laughs> this crazy crab had turrets on top, and he's got one for all of us. The plan was to throw all our best dinos at this last boss, but it's so tough that might not be enough. So if it wipes us out, we can come back with these. Oh, hello. How's oh, it you're going? like upside down. Oh, am I? No. Here, I'll catch you. <laughs> After a bit of goofing around, I teleported back, but accidentally took some crabs home, too. I brought uh, uh, some oh, no. crabs. Oops. Kaya did too, but we took them back. Then I came back that night and donated some ammo for the crab army. Day 98, I spent almost the entire day making saddles for my flock of Argies. Then teleporting creatures over with everyone else's for the final fight. And if you'll look over there, you'll see ASG has a wreck stuck up a tree. Day 99, and it was finally time. To announce the winner of the crown, that is. I think I'd tried to forget about that part, as I was sitting pretty close to last place, aside from Dave, I think. Last I checked, I think Raz was in first place, with well over a hundred crowns sitting safely in his base. But when they announced the winner, something clearly had changed. And the winner is Dave! Turns out some of the others had been plotting to pool their crowns and steal first place. There was nothing in our rules about it, but no time to debate. All of our celebrations had attracted something and it was headed our way. Guys. Yes, yes it is. We all retreated up to these cliffs. Then, despite today's treachery, Raz Clark sent in his Giga Army. They rolled over the cliff like a big metal wave and started chomping away at the Savage Acro. It was starting to look like this fight might not be too bad, with the Gigas eating away at over a quarter of its health. But then we all got this notification. Uh oh. Oh, there we go! Oh, oh my god! Oh, 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 After that attack wiped out most of the Gigas, we all headed off to bring back our own arms. I brought in my flock of Argies and we teamed up to finish it off with a mixed match of attacks. With tech rifles above and giant gators and tickle chickens below, my Argies made it just in time as we all delivered the final blows. That's it! Oh, oh, that's it. Yeah. Nice. 
But our celebration was short-lived, as just around the corner, it looks like this savage acro was not alone. We finished off the season with an epic battle against not one, but two savage acro, using what was left of our armies and Dave's crazy crabs to finish them all. As the last acro fell, day 100 had finally arrived, and that's when something strange appeared in the sky. A strange box had landed nearby and something pulled us all inside. All except for our newly crowned king, that is. Looks like he's flown off and left us behind, leaving us to crown the true king, Raz Clark. All hail King Raz Clark! King King Raz Playing on the Monarchy server has been a ton of fun, but there was no way I could fit all that awesomeness into one video. So if you want to see more of what happened this season, be sure to check out the other's channels down below.